Aurorae are beautiful, mysterious, glowing strips of green or purple color that can be observed on the ground. It can also be observed above from space. Aurorae often appear at latitudes between 60 and 75 degrees near the polar regions, both at the north and south. The auroral zone shows up to be an oval shape concentrated at the night side of the Earth. Aurorae are brighter when our sun is more active in generating flares. In this video, we will discuss why and how the aurora forms. The story starts with Earth's dipole field that forms the magnetosphere, a giant magnetic bubble that shields Earth against harmful supersonic solar winds. Under this constant confrontation, the magnetosphere is deformed by the solar wind pressure into a comet shape. Within the solar winds, there are also magnetic fields that can erode the magnetic field within the magnetosphere at the day side of Earth through changing the connectivity of magnetic field lines, dragging the reconnected field line through the polar caps to the night side of Earth. The field lines at the night side can touch and change the connectivity again, snapping and circling back to the day side through the two sides of Earth. This entire process forms a complete cycle called the Dungy cycle. During this cycle, the foot points of this field line trace a cell on the dusk side of the polar cap, another cell on the dawn side, both at the north and the south. This two-cell convection pattern on the ionosphere of the polar cap can be observed by radars. The dragging of the field line by the solar wind makes Earth's dipole field bend back a bit, generating the horizontal magnetic field component pointing in the opposite direction of the flow. Through the law of electromagnetism, these horizontal magnetic fields will generate downward currents and also the upward currents around the convection cell. These upward currents bring us aurorae. To better illustrate this process, let's take a cut across this red line and see this process from the horizontal direction. Earth's dipole field enters the polar cap at the north. With the shear flow associated with the two-cell convection, the field lines on two ends are dragged and bent in the opposite way, hosting the upward-pointing current that actually consists of negatively charged energetic electrons that precipitate into the ionosphere, exciting nearby atoms that later radiate light, forming aurorae at altitudes from 100 to 400 kilometers. Meanwhile, scientists also realize that the same field line dragging effect can generate electric fields pointing toward the current. This electric field causes a band of electric potential that closes at the lower end, spanning altitude from 4 to 12,000 kilometers that is known as the auroral acceleration region, where electrons gain extra boost in energy and velocity, further brightening the aurora. These are the basics of how the auroral zone develops. There are still lots of beautiful unknowns regarding aurorae that scientists are actively trying to resolve. What we learned from Earth may also carry over to explain lights that shine on other planets, such as Jupiter, Saturn, and exoplanets.